Hi, and welcome. Thank you for joining us today. I am Susan Barishai, founder of Sea Admissions. Uh, today, I will be covering Columbia uh, Business School's MBA application process. Uh, we have about 30 minutes to discuss. Uh, before we dive in, if you can introduce yourself, um, tell us where you're connecting from and what other schools you're applying uh, to. Um, and uh, uh, we'll get uh, to also discuss and, and, and um, answer some of the questions towards the end of uh, the uh, the, the session, or rather the latter half of the session. Um, before we get started, a brief intro of myself. Um, as I said, um, I am the founder of Sea Admissions. I um, am an alumnus of NYU and Yale, um, and have been a coach for about seven years, uh, coaching high achievers uh, go through the MBA application process to land a uh, um, an acceptance to a uh, top 20 MBA program. Um, I have a 90% placement rate, which means that nine out of 10 of the candidates I work with um, are ones that uh, gain admission to at least one of their top choice programs. Um, and uh, that is part of my evaluation criteria. I work with a select number of students every single round. Um, and uh, the process of that uh, evaluation is believing, of course, that I can support um, the candidates through this process. Let's go right into the presentation. Um, a presentation, uh, it's very brief. I am just going to cover what the Columbia Business School uh, application process looks like, um, and then we can dive into the questions. Uh, please write your questions in the chat. I will try to answer as many as possible. We have had uh, questions submitted in a, uh, prior to this live, so uh, we will be answering some of those as well. So let's talk about Columbia Business School's MBA application process. So Columbia is um, uh, a school that, um, or at least the first in the United States, that has um, a two uh, entry um, round or two entry um, points as far as the MBA application. And that's the J term, so the January term, and then the August entry. For January 20, uh, 2023, uh, there is still regular decisions um, uh, open and the deadline for that is September 28th. The August entry, um, we have the early action that's due on September 28th. Um, so if you're considering early action, um, you can apply in that round. The merit fellowship, so to be considered for a merit fellowship, January 11th is the deadline that you should be targeting. Um, but the regular decision doesn't close until April 5th. Um, the one thing that I would say is that um, uh, that I'm sure if you're considering Columbia, you are already aware that Columbia does um, uh, go through the application process on a rolling basis. So this means that the applicants that have submitted their application first are the ones who be, get reviewed first. From the time you submit until the time that you hear that final decision, it's about a six week window. Um, you will be invited to interview and you will have an interview process. Um, and then from the time that you submit your, um, from the time that you have the interview, there's about a two week period um, when you hear about the decision. Uh, Columbia Business School also has a deferred MBA uh, program. Uh, so uh, kind of like HBS is two plus two, you have an opportunity to secure your seat uh, two to five years in advance of, your, of when you're gonna join an MBA program. Uh, that deadline is April 15th of 2023, and that's for seniors um, in their last year of college uh, who are looking, uh, who don't really have uh, work experience other than internships and are looking and know that need an MBA and are looking to secure that seat. As far as the um, MBA, the traditional full-time MBA application process, um, you are required to submit an online application portal or complete an online application portal um, answer a short answer question, three essays, um, one optional essay, and this is truly optional, uh, a one-page resume, and one letter of recommendation. The letter recommendation should be from your supervisor unless you really can't ask uh, your supervisor because there is um, 
uh, you you are at risk of, of losing your job and you're not sure exactly how they're going to react to it. The letter of recommendation should really be from someone who can speak to your um, candidacy and can speak to your future potential as a leader. Um, and so, so it should be really someone who believes in you and has witnessed specific experiences, specific contributions and impacts that you've made over the years, um, or even just in a, you know, past couple of months that can speak to that in the MBA application, uh, sorry, in the letter of recommendation. Um, at the end of the day, the recommender is the only other person that can speak about you outside of yourself. And you do really want to make sure that whoever is going to be your recommender is someone who really um, is a supporter. Let's go through the essay pieces. Um, so the short answer question is 50 character limit. So it's not 50 words, it's 50 characters. So you have to be really, really brief. Um, the question is, what is your immediate post-MBA uh, professional goal? And here you're going to essentially just be direct. So you can say something like join McKinsey as a, a strategy consultant, or you can say something as simple as join a fintech startup uh, as a product manager. All of that, what I just uh, you know, answered is within the 50, 50 character limit. So you really want to make sure that you capture as much as you can. I do like to um, speak about a specific company in mind because it always invokes um, the idea of what you're looking for um, more so than if you just say a sector. Uh, so that would be a recommendation on that front. The essay one um uh, so the first essay uh, is within 500 words, you have to respond to the following question. So through your resume and recommendation, we have a clear sense of your professional path to date. What are your career goals over the next three to five years? And what is your long term dream job? In this essay, what I would strongly recommend is that you start with that dream job. But in that dream job, don't just focus on the job title, but rather focus on the impact that you're looking to make. Then you're going to talk about your um, uh, three to five year plan. And at the end, you can you can speak a little bit about um, how does an MBA support uh, support you. Uh, this is a, a true traditional um, sort of, you know, goals piece. Um, the next question is going to be about why, why Columbia? So um, the question is, we believe CBS is a special place, proudly fosters a collaborative learning environment through curricular experiences like our clusters and learning teams, co-curricular initiatives like Phillips Pathway for Inclusive Leadership, which aim to equip students with skills and strategies necessary to lead in an inclusive and ethical manner, and career mentorship opportunities like our ex um, Executives in Residence program. Why do you feel CBS is a good fit for you, for you academically, culturally, and professionally? This is the traditional um, goals essay. So um, here you're going to talk, uh, sorry, the traditional um, sort of what, uh, what your uh, what are you looking to get out of an MBA um, essay? And uh, you're going to answer really uh, the academic piece. What do you look to get out of CBS culturally? Um, what do you look to get out of the CBS? So this is about the community there. But also don't forget that Columbia's, uh, where Columbia is located uh, in the heart of New York City and how that's going to be um, influential to you and your career professional and your career development. And then professionally, uh, what are some learning opportunities or hands-on learning opportunities that you can take advantage of through CBS uh, that are integral to your professional development so you can reach that long-term dream job that you hope to get? Then the third essay is tell us about your favorite book, movie, or song and why it resonates with you. So here, one thing that I would strongly encourage applicants to consider is that consider the lens through which they should look at this question. It's not about the movie or book or song. It's about you. And the school wants to know who you are from a character perspective. So if you choose a book, you can choose a character within a book. If you choose a movie, you can choose a character within a movie or a theme within a movie. Um, 
or book or song. Um, either one of the choices that you make, it doesn't really matter. It's really about what resonates and speaks to who you are. Um, so uh, here you're going to identify the character or the theme and how it resonates to who you are. 250 words is very little space to dedicate to your um, uh, to, to really dive deeper into uh, what the movie is about and what are the characters. And it's not a book review. It's not a, or a movie review or a song review. It's really about identifying an element about a particular song. You need to give it a little bit of context so that the, re so that the reader of your essay can understand what you are, um, you know, referencing. Um, especially if they haven't seen this movie or song or read this book. Um, and then you need to dive into the resonance. So why does it resonate with you um, in, uh, in so much so that you are including to, you're choosing to include it in your uh, MBA application. And then there is the optional essay. Uh, here it's just like with other schools that I've talked about is areas where the areas that need to be addressed in your MBA application. So for example, if you have, um, if you have had a, um, poor performance in undergraduate, um, and if the admission team just looks at those numbers, it's not really reflective of who you are and what your contributions can be. Here is what you're going to address. What happened sort of, where were you? Um, uh, when you were going through your undergraduate experience, um, or you can talk about, you know, your GMAT or GRE. If it's not what you think it can be, um, you want to uh, address it and, um, and uh, give reasons why you are ready for, for an MBA. You have 500 words, so definitely use it wisely. Um, if there is an area that needs to be addressed, um, it's not about justifying any pieces of your application or experiences. It's really about telling. You share the experience and then share what have you learned from that experience and how, had that exper how has that experience influenced you um, later on in your career um, if you, for example, in undergraduate, really didn't know how to manage your classes or how to manage just college life. Um, well, this is an opportunity for you to talk about what you learned from that experience and then how um, are you taking steps and strides to make sure that you no longer go through that process again. That's essentially what you have to answer in an optional essay, uh, but only use the optional essay if it's really necessary. If you have a 3.7 GPA and it's not a 4.0, like this is not a place where you need that. That score is not something you need to address. Um, no one is expecting you to have perfect A's, uh, but if you are 3.0 or 2.5, uh, you definitely want to address that in your um, uh, application. Okay, so let's dive into questions. Um, I am going to um, uh, look at the questions, if there are any that have come through. Um, I have another screen, so if I look on the aside, it's what I'm, what I'm doing. Um, and uh, if you want to have a conversation and talk about your Columbia applications, uh, please reach out. Uh, we have consultation calls um, that are available to discuss um, prospective applicants' uh, process. Uh, so please feel free to reach out um, for a 30-minute call. The, the information is um, on the screen as well as um, is going to be in the chat as well. Um, we will also be hosting another um, uh, session next week. Um, and um, that's going to be on Berkeley Haas. So please register for that event as well. So let's dive into questions. Okay, so the first question is, does it matter in which month I submit my application? Um, excellent question that came in um, through the chat, uh, through the registration form is um, the, uh, it doesn't really, well, it matters and it doesn't matter which month you apply. You don't wanna wait until the last month uh, to submit your application. 
um, the, the closer you are to that final regular decision deadline, um, the fewer spots are available in the MBA application um, in, the, in the class. So of course you don't, you wanna try to avoid that. Um, but don't submit an application just for the sake of submitting an application because that does not lead to the results that you're looking for. So make sure that you spend enough time in crafting a compelling narrative, that you have strong enough scores um, that uh, make you a competitive candidate for Columbia, but also don't wait until the final final due date um, because by that point, most of the class has already been um, uh, filled. Typically, um, Columbia sees uh, an increase in applicants immediately after the typical round one, uh, round two, excuse me, um, deadlines. So um, if you can submit it before then, that definitely would be a positive in your um, candidacy, but only if it's a strong application. Okay. Okay, so um, we have a question for SA2. What benefits, um, what benefits of, NY, of New York City should applicants address? Well, if you think about um, New York City and all of the potential employers that are there, um, those can be really instrumental in helping you um, have access to industry leaders. Um, if you are joining a club, which you should be, um, and you want to invite industry leaders, well, you have an entire community of people that you can invite that are just next door. Um, you can have an interim internship, which means that um, during the semester, um, you can choose to have an internship if you want to build your candidacy. Um, typically, uh, you know, you, you don't get to do that in, at the likes of, um, let's say, Tuck, for example. Uh, just because of where they're located, it, they're very remote. You may not be able to do that. But a place like Columbia Business School does allow you to do that. Um, you are in a community of really diverse, uh, a really diverse community, um, both within Columbia as well as externally. So what benefits can that um uh, environment provide to your professional development. What you say specifically is going to be individual specific. Uh, and given that this is, um, you know, how is Columbia going to help you with your goals? This is really um, going to be uh, an area where you're speaking directly to what you need to get to that professional um, pr professional career um, that you're looking to to carve for yourself. So, uh, but but think think a little bit deeply is how the community can be support to you and how can you leverage that uh, environment to help you get the exposures, get the network, um, and have the opportunity to really understand what the sector is um, experiencing. What are some of the challenges that you can really be ready for when you leave the business school program? Perfect. Does Columbia Business School look at applicants' GPA? How much weight does it have on the admission on the admission decision? Uh, absolutely, Columbia is an M7, um, and they are um, very rigorous. They're a very rigorous uh, program, and they are expecting to uh, admit candidates that have really strong academic performance. Um, GPA is only one piece of the entire application process, so it's not the end-all, be-all. Um, however, the more you can showcase that you are someone who can uh, succeed in that, that um, environment, the better your chances are. So it doesn't mean that your GPA needs to be, you know, absolutely stellar. Um, there are people from all sorts of, um, uh, you know, coming from various different ranges of, of scores. Um, and what they do is typically, especially those on the lower end of the spectrum, um, uh, are going to take classes or um, so like, for example, uh, Harvard Business School has the core program, very reputable program, um, this specifically designed to prepare you for an MBA program, for an MBA um, experience. So a class like that would really be instrumental in helping you really strengthen your candidacy. But that's also um, uh, somewhat of a, uh, a larger investment. So not everyone goes through it. It's also investment in time and um, capital. 
So you may not have the time to take a 12 to 17 week class that requires eight to 10 or even 15 hours a week of study time. Um, so uh, you really want to um, identify sort of where, uh, where you are in relation to the average class and then how does the rest of the application look like? The more um, areas of weaknesses you have, the more you have to strengthen different pieces to be able to be competitive uh, for your MBA application. Perfect. So what is the minimum work experience required? Does it, does it count internships? So internships are not counted. Um, typically, you're um, evaluated on the full-time work experience that you have since you graduated, your undergraduate. Um, and typically for an MBA, you would have um, uh, two, at least two years of work experience, uh, professional work experience post-undergraduate um, uh, by the time you join the program. Now, um, the average is about five, five years of work experience. So um, really you wanna evaluate the caliber and, and the caliber of work that you've had and the contributions and the impact you've had over the years. So make sure that um, you're not just submitting uh, too early um, because if you are not able to bring um, new perspectives um, to the classroom, it will be a very low probability of admission. Okay, can I still get in even with uh, even if my GMAT score is the, on the lower side of the spectrum? Absolutely, just like with the GPA, um, if your uh, uh, if your GMAT or GRE is on the lower end of the spectrum, um, you would have to have other areas that are stronger to indicate that you have the capability to succeed academically. So if you have um, a really strong uh, GPA, but sort of on the lower end of the spectrum GMAT or GRE score, um, that's still a possibility for you to gain admission to the school. Um, so the score itself is, again, also a, another data point that is looked at um, in your application, but your application is reviewed holistically. So uh, the more areas that you have that are um, somewhat red flags, um, you really want to make sure that other areas are really stellar to, um, uh, to be able to overcome that, um, that uh, weakness in your profile. So if the GMAT the score is low, GPA should be really strong. If both of them are low, then you need to have to take classes to showcase that you can, uh, classes that are graded, that they are able to see that you have succeeded in that class to be able to uh, demonstrate that you have the academic aptitude to succeed. The one thing that I would say about the GMAT or the GRE, um, really take the test that makes you shine. Um, don't submit a score just because you think that the GMAT is better. Um, you should be submitting a score that is best reflective of your capabilities um, because that's at the end of the day what the evaluation um, is about. Um, so evaluate, if, especially if you are at the stage where you're deciding between the GMAT and the GRE, evaluate which one is the best for you, um, where you would thrive the most and sit for that exam. It, uh, admission teams are um, really agnostic as to which which test you submit. Okay, I plan to establish my own business. How do I answer the essay question about my dream job? You plan to um, start your own business and whether that's uh, long term or short term. But if you're planning to start your business, I mean, this goes back to the values and the contributions and the impact you're looking to make. So think about what impact are you looking to make in the industry, in the specific field that you are um, interested in, in, in starting your own venture um, and the kind of impact, the kind of problem that you see, first and foremost, and how you look to, um, uh, to solve that problem through your own entrepreneurial venture. So definitely speak to that. However, the only thing I would say here is that if you don't have prior um, entrepreneurial exposure, um, it is a bit of a difficult sell, especially the short-term goal um, to say entrepreneurship as your dream job for schools like Columbia. Um, you want to um, uh, be able to uh, speak to that entrepreneurial venture, perhaps on the long-term perspective. Uh, but if there's no historical evidence to substantiate that venture 
um, that you would be able to succeed in a venture, uh, then it may be a bit more of a, of a stretch of a sell. So be mindful. Um, so this answer is all, of course, always dependent on the background that you have, um, that you bring to the table. Perfect. Uh, we have about five minutes left um, in the session. Um, if you have questions, please write it in the chat and we'll answer before um, we end our, um, our uh, live. Next question is, what is Columbia Business School looking for from its applicants? Um, absolutely. So Columbia uh, is a school that really wants to train um, individuals who have um, to have rather an entrepreneurial mindset, even if you're not looking to be an entrepreneur. What that means is that you have to have um, the inclination to be someone that can, that has, that sees opportunities um, at the end of the day. You want, there's, that is a mindset um, more so than skill, a skill like in a technical sense. Um, the mindset of seeing opportunity um, is what makes Columbia very different um, and it, you also want to showcase that you have those capabilities. Of course, they're looking for you to be, um, to have, um, evidence to showcase that you are going to have success in the future. So your prior career in particular is going to be instrumental that you can bring value to the classroom, that you have new uh, perspectives to share. So definitely. Definitely, um, you want to uh, speak to that in your application. And individuals that are looking for, um, you know, opportunities from the perspective of the community they are part of, the, 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 the smaller community, meaning the MBA program, but also the larger community, um, is really what makes um, a candidate stand out for um, CBS. Perfect. Uh, what if my favorite book, movie, or song is not known in the U.S.? How can I explain what it is and answer uh, why it resonates with me in just 250 words? Yes, that is definitely a challenge, uh, a challenge to do. Um, if it's so obscure that it requires a lot of, um, a lot of explanation, well, you may probably want to choose something else um, because uh, if it requires a genre uh, description and then the description of the character and the theme, it becomes too much space away from you, which is the main topic, the main point of the essay itself. Um, so look for something that um, is less complicated to describe. Uh, however, just because it's not known in the United States doesn't mean that you should not talk about it. So if it's a, a book or a movie, that really resonates with you. Again, go go through the same process as I mentioned early. Um, identify the character, the value, the theme that resonate that um, that speaks to you in in that uh, book, movie, song, and then come back to you, to who you are, and speak to how do you connect with this individual or this theme, um, and how it speaks to your experiences. Um, that you've had over over the years and that have shaped who you are. Um, that at the end of the day is really what's important. So dedicate, um, I would say probably, um, just to be sort of technical here, um, probably about um, 75 to 100 words in the book, movie or song, um, but it shouldn't really exceed 100 words. Um, and then the next 150 should be about you. Perfect. Awesome. So it looks like we don't have any additional questions. Um, thank you all very much for joining me today on this Columbia Business School um, application discussion. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Um, it helps us really make sure that we are providing content that is useful to you. Um, if you have not subscribed um, and again, you like content to, to, um, to get content around the business school application process, uh, please subscribe to our YouTube channel um, and um, click that button to be notified. Uh, let, next week, we will be discussing um, Berkeley Haas um, uh, MBA application process. So if you are considering Berkeley, please sign, register for that event as well. The week after that, we will be talking about Ross. Um, so as soon as that uh, event goes up live, um, you can register for that one as well. 
Uh, thank you again for joining us. Uh, wishing you a lot of luck in this application process, whether you are preparing for the test scores or in the process of writing your um, essays. Um, best of luck, and uh, I look forward to seeing you next week. Thank you.